Hi everyone, welcome back to How I YouTube, where I take you behind the scenes and show you how I do things on my channel. In the previous two episodes, we talked about microphones and video equipment. So if you missed any of those, I will link them up here so you can check it out. I definitely recommend watching the one on video equipment since we're gonna talk a little bit more about that today. Today I'm going to take you through how I actually shoot my videos, how I set up everything, and how I make sure everything looks good even when I don't have someone to man the camera for me. As many of you know, I do 100% of the preparation, planning, shooting, and editing of my videos by myself, and it's a challenge. Over the years, I've learned through trial and error what are some ways to really make sure I can get consistent results all the time, even when I don't have someone to help me. So I'm gonna share some of those uh, insights with you today, uh, and hopefully it will help you too. As usual, links to all gear mentioned in this video will be in the description below, and if you purchase anything through those links, you are supporting this channel at no extra cost to you, so thank you for that. Okay, let's get started. So when I'm planning to shoot a new YouTube video, the very first step for me is making sure I am organized and prepared. And that means making sure I know exactly what parts need to be recorded, how many angles I need to get of each shot, uh, any other special circumstances I need to account for, and that's my first tip to you too, is to be organized and plan out ahead of time what you are doing. Now you might say, oh, I only need to get a wide shot and a close-up shot. That's really easy to remember. Well, that's great, but that might not always be the case. And uh, there's nothing worse than going back to edit your video later and realizing, oh, I totally forgot to record this one instrument or this one section, and now it's too late to do that. So a really good example for this for me personally is when I did my Star Wars video, because it was just a solo violin part, I did 12 or 13 different camera angles. And because I had to set up the backdrop different ways, I had to do the 12 uh, different shots and then I had to tear down all the lights and the backdrop, change it, then do it again and then one more time. <laughs> so by the end of the day, I couldn't remember what I had done and if I hadn't had my huge checklist uh, to mark off for each section which shots I had already gotten, there's no way I would have been able to make sure that I got everything that I needed. So that's my first tip, make sure you are super prepared, know exactly what you're going to be doing so that you don't waste any time filming. Also involved in preparation if you're making a music video is uh, preparing whatever music track you're going to use, if it's going to be the final audio that you're just going to play along with, or if you're going to use a click track, whatever method. We'll talk more about that later, but that is also something I make sure uh, to do ahead of time so that when I get started filming, I don't have to waste any time uh, figuring that out. Moving on to actually setting up everything. So setting up lighting is gonna be a little different depending on your room and your situation. In my case, I record in my office, which is a pretty decent sized uh, bedroom basically, uh, but it's still not a huge space. I have this window behind me that lets in various amounts of light depending on what time of year it is and what the weather is like. So I always have to adjust for that. So I'll set up my lights in pretty much this way. I have my two soft boxes out and the ring light. Usually I'll have my softbox on this side pointed at me from behind and then I'll have one on that side to light the background. That's usually where I start but uh, I always adjust depending on what looks good on that day and then I have my ring light. I usually set my camera on my tripod and put it as far against the opposite wall as I can uh, because like I said it's a small room and I want to get as wide a shot as possible and I position my ring light uh, next to the camera not behind the camera like most people do and the reason for that is because in this video right now I have the ring light positioned behind the camera because uh, my face is facing the camera. But when I record my violin videos, I'm usually facing more at this angle. So I found that if I put the ring light behind the camera, it makes the lighting look too flat and washed out at that angle. Also, the violin creates a lot of really weird shadows uh, between the bow and the chin rest and everything. So sometimes I have to position my lights a little bit to account for that. And for that reason, I place the ring light a little bit to my right, I raise it up a bit and kind of angle it downward so that there is no shadow from the bow hitting my face. So it lights it a little bit from above. That's what I have found best works for me with violin. Uh, but obviously stuff like that is gonna be very individual based on what you are recording. I also usually like to have a music stand out with the music that I'm playing, even if it's just a rough version of the sheet music, because at least with violin, it's very visual. And if I play the wrong bowing or the wrong articulation or the wrong fingering, it's gonna be very obvious to anyone watching that what I'm playing in the video does not match what I'm playing in the audio. I really wanna make my video look as authentic as possible, so I really try to 
as accurately as possible match the performance in the video to the audio. So I usually have the sheet music out and I mark with a red pen uh, all the boings and articulations because usually I do have the piece memorized. I'm not reading the music, but if I forget in the heat of the moment or I feel like I messed something up, I can have that there as a reference to check really quick and to make sure that I'm on the right track. So another thing you'll notice is I have this small TV screen set up here too. It's just an old TV that I've had and I have it hooked up to my camera with an HDMI cable so that way I can see what I'm recording on the TV screen. So you might be wondering, well, doesn't your camera have a flip out screen? Why would you need a, an extra TV setup? And yes, I have a flip out screen, but it is very small. And even uh, the way it's set up right now for this video, it's about an arm's length away and I still have a hard time telling if I'm in focus or not in it because my eyes aren't very good. <laughs> so keep in mind, if I have the tripod all the way against the far wall and I'm standing right in front of the window, I'm several feet away from the screen and there's no way I can see it. I've been very disappointed uh, to like shoot a video and find out that all my footage was blurry because I wasn't in the right spot. And I couldn't tell because the screen was so small that I couldn't really tell that it was blurry. What I've found is that the only way I can get consistently reliable footage is to use this TV screen as an external monitor because then I can tell right away if it goes out of focus, if I'm in the wrong spot, not to mention if I, you know, float out of the frame or the, fl the frame is positioned incorrectly uh, because it can be hard to set up the camera when you're doing it by yourself. Uh, it can be hard to position it. And even besides that, um, if I just was here staring at the screen the entire time I'm playing the violin for my video, it would start to look kind of creepy. Generally, I don't like to look at the camera for an extended period of time. Uh, I really try to like not break the fourth wall unless I'm doing it intentionally. So I don't like to look at the camera directly. I think it can look awkward. And so you might notice in a lot of my videos, it looks like I'm closing my eyes the entire time I'm playing. But actually what I'm doing is I'm just staring down at this TV screen, which is positioned right here. I'm just staring at it the entire time to make sure I'm in focus, to make sure I'm right in the shot, to make sure that I don't suddenly land on an unflattering angle. Other reason that I really find it helpful is that on a smaller screen, it can be really hard to see if anything is wrong with the video, like if there's an excess of noise. And this used to plague my videos so much. I would do test shots ahead of time because it would look fine on the camera and then I would put it on the computer and suddenly, oh my gosh, there's so much noise and it would just drive me crazy. So having this larger screen definitely does help to assess the amount of noise in your shots and whether or not it is acceptable because I might have to adjust my camera settings accordingly to make sure that the shot looks good. And I would rather do that as I'm shooting than to be surprised afterwards when there is nothing I can do about it. Sometimes even when I'm shooting someone else, like when I have a harpist come over to record, uh, I will still use this monitor because it helps me to see how much noise is in the shot, how the shot is looking on a larger screen, so it'll be more representative of what the final video will look like. So I know you can also do this, uh, you can hook up your camera to a laptop or, you know, depending on what kind of camera you have, you might be able to do this a different way. Uh, so if you are able to try that out, I would recommend it. Using this TV really has been like the number one way I have found to make sure I get consistently good results while I'm shooting, even though I don't have any outside help. So when you're making a music video, uh, there are two ways to do it, right? You could do live audio while shooting video, and this is how my string quartet videos are, where we are recording audio and video at the same time, or you could do all the audio first and then shoot the video later. And this is typically how I do my solo videos where I just shoot in the room. And I found that trying to get my video as good as possible when I'm doing a solo music video takes up a lot of energy, as you can imagine from what I've been describing. When we do live string quartet recording, you can tell I don't move as dynamically because one, you can't really move a lot with the microphones there. And two, because I have to be listening very critically, I, you know, it's just too much to do at once. I find it's a lot easier if I can record the audio first, be 100% focused on that, get it the way I want it, and then do the video after. Also because when I'm recording the audio, I might change my mind about stuff and change things in the arrangement. And if I was doing the video at the same time, it would just be a huge mess. So I finalize the audio and then I move on to video. So that means though, that if you are recording this way, you need to have some kind of track to play along with. That way your video will match the audio that you already recorded after the fact. So a lot of people will just uh, hit play on their finalized audio track and then just play along on their instrument with the video. And I don't do it that way because I have found that it's a lot more efficient for me to play along with the click track instead. Since 90% of my uh, arrangements for my videos 
are done with a click track, I find it's much easier just to record with that. And what that means is it's basically just like a metronome that the track was recorded to. So I make an audio version of that click at the tempo that the music plays. And I just have that playing on loop through my speakers as I'm doing the video. So the reason I like to do it this way though is because, um, you know, like I mentioned before, violin is very visual and if I mess up a bowing or something, I'm gonna need to go back and fix it. So if I was playing the entire track and let's say I messed up right in the middle, it would be a little hard to go back and find my spot or I would have to start all over again from the beginning and that would be frustrating. So instead I just have the click playing the entire time and I just go back a few bars and start over again once I realize my mistake and continue from there. This helps me to correct any issues I notice, like me floating out of the shot, camera going out of focus, something's wrong with my hair. You know, <laughs> if for any reason I'm not happy with how I look in the shot, I could just backtrack a little bit and go from there instead of having to start over. It's also helpful if I'm recording accompaniment parts that maybe don't play the entire time. I don't like to sit around for the entire song waiting for my turn to come in. So having the click there really helps me to be able to start and stop where I need to and just to get all the recording done super fast. So the downside to doing it this way is, yes, it does take a little bit longer for me to sync the footage after the fact, but as long as I'm organized in the way I'm shooting, it really doesn't take that long. And uh, since it could get kind of hot in the room with all the lights and everything, it's a little uncomfortable. So I don't really mind that it takes a little bit longer to sync it afterwards. It's a personal preference, but that's just how I do it. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. I hope you found that helpful. If you have any questions, as always, leave them in the comments below and I will answer them. And definitely let me know what you would like to see next. See you next time.